Anda sedang mendengar Shock Podcast. Shock. Halo, saya Sheila Majid dan anda sedang mendengarkan Shock Celebrity Podcast Sheila Majid. Hello, saya Sheila Majid. Terima kasih kerana masih lagi bersama kami mendengarkan Short Celebrity Podcast Sheila Majid. Sebenarnya kan saya bersyukur kerana waktu saya mula menjadi penyanyi di Kuala Lumpur ni banyak tempat untuk kita membuat persembahan live. Ya, waktu itu memang orang suka menonton persembahan live. So bagi di saya, waktu saya menyanyi di tempat-tempat seperti Club All That Jazz, seperti Club Rainbow, Pyramid dulu di wilayah, itu sebenarnya training. Very good training because yalah kita kena menyanyi kadang-kadang depan orang-orang yang mabuk. And then for you to try and get their attention tu, it's not easy tau. But still we learn. As we go along, we learn oh how to actually uh, handle them, and we have to be careful also. Bila kita bercakap, jangan terlebih ah, nanti dia attack kita pula. So all that to me was good training for me. That is how I built my experience in being a performer. Dan seperti saya katakan juga, kita pun kena buat homework. You know, bila kita sebelum night stage tu kita mesti tahu apa di concert yang kita buat ni. And you have to also Macam kata for example If you do a corporate show Then you do a, your homework regarding them Because yang datang ni semua Daripada company yang sama So bila you bercakap Semua boleh relate Then they will pay attention to you Instead of you don't repeat Entah benda yang dia tak interested kan But for a concert yang berskala besar Saya harus pandai Untuk membuat turutan lagu saya itu Dan apa saya bercakap tu Ada kena mengena lah dan juga dia akan ada kena mengena dengan perkara-perkara yang terjadi di dalam negara yang semua pun boleh relate. Ah, so all that is actually preparations. So it's not just singing. Eh. Today I tengok macam a lot of people pakai visuals. So if they don't speak, they have their visuals to take the audience punya attention. Tapi waktu saya dulu tak banyak visual. So we have to stand alone and we have to be the entertainer. Dan bagi diri saya, itu dia yang memberi saya training Untuk macam mana saya nak beraksi di dalam pentas yang berskala besar Maupun pentas antarabangsa Sebenarnya kan album boneka tu It was financed by my fans I am not signed up with any label today Dan bagi diri saya pula, bila saya buat performance Saya tengok orang nak lagu antara Anil Jakarta Sinaran, Aku Cinta Padamu, Lagu Memori Ini semua lagu zaman-zaman dulu So for me, if I were to do a new album with new songs Maknanya saya harus mengeluarkan duit saya Tetapi zaman sekarang ini Bila kita mengeluarkan duit untuk buat album Kita tak akan mendapat balik The investment that we put in Because now there's internet People can download for free You know there's so many avenues lah Yang orang boleh download Without having to buy our CDs Betul tak? So saya fikir-fikir Kalau saya buat album pun Saya tak akan mendapat balik duit saya Saya buat show pun Orang nak dengar lagu-lagu lama Kan? So I thought No need to do album lah So for 13 years I did not have a new album Tetapi peminat Nak ni Duk minta Kak Sheila You know Buatlah lagu baru Buat lagu baru So when I explain this to them Then they said You know what Kita semua ni Akan kumpul duit And give you to do an album Best tak I have the best fans In the world I tell you Okay Mula saya kata Eh takkan lah But they want nekat So if you look at my Boneka album If you look at the sleeve Dalam tu ada special things There's four companies in there Those are all owned by my fans And these are the ones that actually paid for my album boneka They just want a new album from me And they don't even want their money back <laughs> Can you imagine? So Alhamdulillah You know that to me that's macam bulan jatuh di riba yeah? So that's how I managed to do my boneka album Financed by my fans 13 years after my last album which was in 2004 then in 2017 I came out with Boneka sometimes you need a break yeah bila kita rasa macam you have reached a point where nothing you know you're, you're trying so hard to perah your brain to to find ideas but it just doesn't come take a break stop that means you're burnout we are not machines this is what people forget today I notice 
people are treating people like machines. For example, my husband does this reality program. Uh, it's a competition, yeah. Rehearsal time, dia kadang sampai 11 malam. And then the next day, the production expects the vocalist to come back again at 9 in the morning when the program only starts at 9. Now, you need to be logical in that manner. Ini bukan kita masuk plug switch and they can go. If they have finished rehearsal at 11, they need to rest. You must give them rest as in these are human beings. No need for them to come in the morning. So what if they come in the afternoon? So you give them more time to rest. So kita ni pun kena tengok juga tau bila kita deal dengan performers, kita deal dengan human being. Tapi sekarang ni orang ingat dia main petik aje. Because I always tell my production team, I say you know, you must remember orang yang perform ke atas tu dia kena look fresh, dia kena look good and all that. You all yang kerja production ni you can look like hell. No one's going to look at you. So even if you don't have enough rest but your j- kerja jalan, you don't have to look good. Tapi yang frontliners ni you must give them a certain amount of time to rest. Itu important so that you will not reach burnout. And you also must have good time management. You won't reach burnout. I always tell my children, if you have work that was given on Monday but you have to pass it up on Friday, do it on Tuesday. Because Tuesday bukan you ada apa nak buat tapi tak tunggu sampai Friday morning baru nak buat. Ni nak pass up petang ni. That's when you're going to have shoddy work because you don't have time to check and that's when you're going to get burnt out because in that short time you have to really think. But at least katalah you get your apa on Monday, Tuesday you start you buat and then you think you have finished it. Okay, put aside. And Wednesday you might think, "Eh, hey, you know what? I can improve more on that." You go back to it. So you actually have a lot more time to actually look into it and give a great presentation on that Friday. And kita juga sometimes we tend to say, "Ah, buat ni besok lah." I have time Sekali besok Something happen Ada pula Your brother Termasuk longkang ke You have to bring him To the hospital and So you are already Faced with that Which is more urgent And then you Kena tinggalkan This thing That you've left behind And then lepas tu Ada benda lagi datang Accumulate lagi Accumulate lagi And then you're just Gonna look at it And go I can't do this It's too much But because Why? Because you Did not do A proper time management On it As for me I try and finish Whatever I can Even though It's two weeks away I just try and finish it Because then It's out of my way New things come I can handle it I won't feel so bored Itu dia No procrastinating lah Try and finish What you can As much as you can Today Even if It's going to be A week away That you need to send it Or whatever Actually kan There's no secret Dalam apa-apa bidang Yang kita buat pun Mutu is very important Quality We know that But whether we do it or not Is another thing Like some people ask me How do you keep yourself slim? How do you need? How you You know what you're supposed to do But do you do it or not? You know you're supposed to Exercise Believe me A lot of people malas nak exercise I pun malas sebenarnya But it does help you know It makes you think better You're stronger I mean Janganlah excessive sangat You don't have to do it Like every day One hour Membanting tulang Every five times a week No need Our body only needs A maximum of three Light exercises But at least It keeps you going Your heart beating well Your blood flowing well It's all for your health Now Health is the most important thing Because if you have no money but you have good health, duit boleh cari because you're healthy. You can go out there and look for it. But if you have all the money in the world but you're not healthy and you're on the hospital bed, how are you going to spend your money and enjoy it? It's the mind, it's the way you think that is important. Do things that is good for you. So it's not secret for me. I try and keep myself healthy because I have children, I have a husband and if I'm not healthy, how am I going to take care of them? Betul tak? So... I try and keep myself healthy and number two, I try like I said, time management. Because you know what I what I find? Like say for example, if I can finish everything today, sekali tomorrow there's nothing that happen, I have a whole free day to do my manicure, me time whatever, you know? And whatever that you're supposed to do is already out of the way and you have more time for yourself if you do that. And then like I said, whatever you do, Please do not have this tidak apa attitude and asa boleh. Because if you are going to actually dish out what is mediocre, then you're going to be mediocre. Everything is 
mediocrity pun you accept but you should not settle you should excel you should strive for excellence and that is where quality comes in when you work towards quality then it will tahan lama betul tak yeah same thing like when you buy stuff because you need to be proud of your work because results is important to me my father had a very good quote he said to me you know what if you're good you don't go around saying you're good if you're good you let people go around tell other people you're good so results are important no point saying saya saya me me i i i me but you cannot you don't show the results to it so you won't you won't last long orang will say ala dia tu cakap je but if you don't talk much but you show it in your results people will say eh dia punya show i talk tengok bagus lah ni 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 let people talk about it but you just keep on giving out good work good quality stuff because you know why i respect my fans so much that i would want to give them things that i would actually like quality stuff then only i can give it to my fans that's why i take a long time to do my album <laughs> i have to like it it's too important this is the mindset Alright, so nantikan episod akan datang Ada banyak lagi cerita yang menarik yang ingin saya ceritakan